everyone. Paul from High Tech Legion, and welcome to the High Tech Legion channel. We've got the Gigabyte Z87X UD3H. Gigabyte has made some nice changes to their Z87 series for Haswell. Ultra durable 5 Plus, which includes nicer heat sinks, of course, the two ounce copper PCB. You also have a fully digital VRM, we'll show you that. Uh, inside the review, and we'll go over that a little bit later. We also have dual BIOS on the board and an Intel NIC now. They went, they got away from the Realtek NIC, went to the Intel NIC on this board. We have some nicely designed heat sinks, and not only that, we have a new UEFI BIOS. So we're gonna be taking a look at all of that, so stand by, let's get a closer look at the motherboard, we'll look at some benchmarks, and then we'll go over the rest of everything else. All right, everyone. So as we take a look at the box, we can see plainly that Gigabyte has kind of changed their design about, about things. Clearly, you can see the new heat sinks up on the top here. Z87X UD3H. That's some new, new print that they have, the Gigabyte logo up on the top. The Ultra Durable 5 Plus. What does that include? Ultra Cool. That's the new heat sink design. These heat sinks are designed to either be passive or water cooled, depending on the motherboard that you buy. So you'll get the best thermals on your VRM and PWM. Ultra performance, it's all digital. So now everything is digital. It's a truly digital VRM and PWM, and it's made by IR. Some of the best quality stuff. Ultra safe, you have a dual BIOS in it. Dual BIOS can be accessed via switch on board, and it's a UEFI BIOS. There's two different versions of the UEFI BIOS. You either have a dashboard mode or you have the classic mode. Classic mode for those older guys like me who like the old way of tuning things, go into classic. And you have the Ultra USB 3 Plus. There's 10 plus uh, USB 3.0 ports on this motherboard, which gives you a little bit better connectivity. If we switch, flip over the box, on the back of the box, of course, we can see the motherboard. There's a topography of the motherboard and the layout. It talks about the caps. These are solid black caps. You have the two, two time, 2X copper PCB. You can support up to six fans on this. Just a whole bunch of different new stuff, and of course you have the on-off charge too, and it does support 4K monitors. So, it's got some nice features. We're going to go ahead and open the box, which of course does not have the motherboard in it, because I actually have the motherboard out and ready to be displayed, but we'll take a look at what accessories it has in it. So, first we have an SLI bridge. Then, of course, you have your I.O. We've got four SATA, SATA 6G connectors. A nice little sticker for your case. Then we have the ultra-durable manual. Of course, it says ultra-durable on it, but we have the manual for the motherboard. the driver disc, and of course a multilingual installation guide. And that's basically everything that comes inside the motherboard accessory wise, so now we'll go ahead and take a look at the motherboard. Now that we have the motherboard laid out on, on the table, let's go ahead and first take an actual look at the heat sinks. These are the new ultra durable heat sinks. As you can see, and I'm going to give you a close-up here, they're designed a little bit differently. They've actually went with a newer type design here. Um, some of these, as I said, can be active or passively cooled. Uh, this, one pers this one here specifically is just basically passive cooled. But as you can see, they're a little bit more aesthetic. 
They are fairly beefy, but they're not so big as to where they're going to take up a lot of space. And they look pretty nice. They actually went back to a little bit of a blue scheme here, so that's not bad. Now, the other thing about Ultra Durable, and again, I'll bring this a lot closer for you, is the gold-plated socket. As you can see, the brushes are gold-plated. So you're going to get a little bit better connectivity out of that, or longevity, etc. And you have the solid black caps, as you can see right here. So that's some of the distinctive features that they did. Of course, you have the, you know, the 2X copper PCB on here. So let's go ahead and put it back down. And I'll lift it up and bring it back down for you guys and girls when I need to uh, point out specific features. Well, as you already know, it's tri-SLI capable. You do have three uh, SLI ports here, one, two, and three. It does have a PCI port and you have three X1 PCIe ports. You have an 8-pin power connector up on the top here. And on the, depending on which side you're looking at it, but on the left side or the right side, you have two CPU fan headers. One is an optional and one is, of course, the, the one for the system. So if you have a heat sink that has two fans on it or an AIO that has two fans, you can connect both fans to it. When we come up to the, to the top of the board, we have two little buttons here. The blue button is the reset switch, and of course this button here is the reset CMOS switch. Down below that is the power button, and then this are the, these are the switches for your dual BIOS. The board does also have a debug, which is very good. On boards of this price at $159, you normally don't see a debug. You normally don't see your power and dual BIOS switches on it. You also have connectors here so you can measure your voltages, which is something of a board of this caliber you may or may not have. So when we turn it this way, we're going to see the 24-pin power connector, and we're also going to see the first of two onboard USB 3.0 headers. Over on the front here, we have two, four, six, native SATA 6 connectors. And then right here we have two. This is via a Marvell controller or the G-SATA as Gigabyte likes to call it. So now you have the G-SATA on this end. We have another fan header here below that. And of course this is for your case, your IO on the case. Right here, if I pull this off, is your second onboard USB 3.0 header. Then, of course, you have your regular USB 2.0s, you have your, your uh, COM ports, you have another uh, fan header here, and, of course, this is for your audio. I did go up and show you the PCIe slots. You also have another fan header just below the uh, vertical heat sink. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the IOs. As you can see, this has got 8-channel Realtek, Realtek uh, audio. You have two USB ports underneath the NIC. This is now an Intel NIC. Gigabyte has one with an Intel NIC. And I will tell you this much. I've tested the Intels. I've tested the Realtek's. I've tested a couple others. One thing that I've found with our testing with the, with the Intel NIC, you're getting a lot better sustained throughput with an Intel NIC opposed to, say, a Realtek or a couple of the others that are out there. We then, again, have two more USB ports, eSATA ports, which are run by the Marvell controller, optical out, you have HDMI, this is actually a display port underneath that, of course you have your VGA, and then you have your DVI, which I'm not going to break anything by trying to pull the cap off. And then, of course, two more USB 3.0 ports and a PS2 port. This motherboard is stacked with a lot of options that you won't find on a motherboard of this, this price. And one thing that I did neglect to show you was right here. 
This is actually an extra power port for SATA. So when you're running TriSLI, if you need a little bit more extra power to make sure that you're going to get the maximum power and sustain your, uh, and not take away from your USB ports and your other peripherals, plug that in, it'll give extra power. It goes directly from the back to the PCIe ports. So this doesn't go anywhere else, it's specifically for the PCIe. And while we did that, now you can actually take a look at the back of the board. And of course on the back of the board here are your screws for your heat sinks. All right, let's go back to the desk and I'll give you my thoughts and feelings on the board. Now that you've taken a look at the Gigabyte board and you've seen the benchmarks, as you can see, it performs basically just as well as any other motherboard on the Z68-7 series that we've, that we've tested. So any other manufacturer, including this one, they're within a margin of reason or a margin of error, so it's not, not really that much of a difference in performance when it comes to that. So let's go ahead and focus on the qualities of the board. The qualities of the board, the good things that stand out that I like, it's $159. It's got a debug on it. It has a power switch on it. It has a dual BIOS. You could switch the dual BIOS manually. So, you know, you have the two switches there. You, you do get the Intel LAN. And I will tell you, we're, we use JPerf, which is, a, which is a, a benchmark that shows you the bandwidth, and it also shows you bandwidth jitter. And what we've seen with Intel LANs, because we've actually tested Intel LANs, of course, on Intel motherboards before and other motherboards that use it, what we found is you get a lot less bandwidth jitter with bandwidth jitter with an Intel LAN opposed to a Realtek and even at times sometimes a killer NIC, the E21 or the 2200. So these are a couple of great features with it. The other good feature that I like about it is there's two headers for USB 3.0 on this board. Now, I've always found myself getting, you know, I, I have extra USB 3.0 stuff that I could put, you know, like brackets and stuff that I could put into my case. And I always find that, you know, you got the one for the case, but you might have an extra bracket that you might want to use to utilize to put up in the front, and you don't have that extra header that you could connect to. This has it. You have two headers on there, makes it a lot easier for you to, you know, use something else that's USB 3.0 and actually get it coming off your motherboard. A couple of things that I didn't technically like too much is the new dual BIOS. I found the dashboard mode to be a little bit perplexing at first. It was a little confusing. There's still a couple items on there that I'm, even with contacting Gigabyte and they really, they haven't gotten back to me on them, that like those on off switches in the dashboard mode by all the voltages, are they for making the voltage changes there immediately? Because when I reboot, they're back off. They don't stay on. So I'm still trying to figure that one out. Is it for an immediate overclock? Is it not for an immediate overclock? I did find that the classic mode tend to be a little bit sluggish. I had to click a few times in order to get it to, uh, in order to get the Dropbox to come down. And if you hear anything in the background, that's actually my dog. He's trying to get up on me here or jump on the chair. So I'm sorry about the background noise. But in any case, for what you're getting with the Gigabyte board, as I said, the Intel NIC, the dual USB headers. You're getting the nicer heat sinks, you're getting the solid black caps, you're getting ultra durable five. And you're getting it at a price of $159. It makes it a gold award. The only thing that I think that they could have added to this board that is missing is Wi-Fi. If it had Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on it, 
it would definitely make this board an editor's choice. But again, we're still looking at $159 motherboard, but I still feel that even at $159, it might have, should have still had some Wi-Fi on it. And of course, as I said, the BIOS need a little bit of work. They are nice, they're fairly intuitive, but I think that they what they did was they added too many tabs. So it's just, you, you, you're, you're, you're floating back and forth. I, I, even though they give you the option in the BIOS to, to set up the tabs the way that you want, you can put anything and everything in there, I really feel that just per default, they should have it a little bit, they, they should have a little bit more compressed with, with less tabs. But in any case, you're watching this video, so why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our channel? We'd appreciate that, you know, so you'll know when to come back the next time for another another uh, video. Make sure you uh, definitely find us out, find us on uh, on Facebook, and that's going to be facebook.com HTL Reviews. We also have a Twitter page, which is twitter.com front slash high tech legion. And remember, it's high tech, H-I-T-E-C-H-L-E-G-I-O-N, not H-I-G-H. So thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you the next time with over a 1,000 videos uploaded. If you haven't seen it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. Stay thirsty, my friends. Good night.